right now. There we go. Alright, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the Sly Guy Lures 7.5 inch replica gill or in this case, crappie swim bait. Let's get right into it. Alright, so like I said, today we're going to be, I guess you could say, reviewing or really just taking a look into this bait right here. This is the Sly Guy Lures made by Clayton Sly out in California. And this is his 7.5 inch uh, replica. It's called a replica gill. He mainly makes it in a gill pattern, but this is a crappie color. Now, this is actually, or we'll get to that in a second, but first of all, let's talk about just the overall size and profile of this bait. Uh, it is seven and a half inches, so if you want to see that compared to my hand, it's a, it's a pretty decent sized bait. This is not a bait that you're just going to be throwing every day and be just catching a bunch of numbers on, but it is definitely a size of a lure. It comes in at about four ounces, so no, we're going to talk about it um, a little bit later, but just heads up, you, are, you can't throw this on a normal rod. You're gonna need some kind of big swim bait rod to throw this. Something at least rated to, in my eyes, probably five ounces is where you at least need it rated to. Um, so, got on the size. Now, the paint job. Or, let's just talk about the visuals. The big thing with this lure, or what you can see, just like by looking at it, the thing you notice first is just the absolute just realism and just how beautiful, it's, it's a work of art, how beautiful this lure is. It is a handcrafted lure. These are made one by one by one person working at, I'm pretty sure his house, he swim tests every single one, and that will come up again when we get towards the end talking about this bait's value, because that is a big thing. This is not a cheap bait. So, the paint job, now, this is actually, is not paint, this was not painted by Clayton Sly, who is the owner of, and creator of Sly Guy Lures. Um, this is actually an aftermarket paint job that somebody else did, did but um, as you can see, it's not not bad. <laughs> this person did an extremely good job, and these are very comparable to the paint jobs that um, Clayton does on his actual baits, um, and it's very close to his level of quality. So just to let you know, the paint jobs are great, and right now, I'm going to throw up a few inch through images of the actual paint jobs that he does, or just a few of them, uh, from Sly Guy Lures Instagram. So I'll throw those up right on the page right now. So as you can see, all the paint jobs, you can't get this one, unfortunately, but he does have other crappy, um, crappy as I showed you and obviously the bluegill and you can see yeah they are extremely impressive they're they're absolutely amazing um now this is in the shape of actually let's backtrack a little bit one second I'm getting a low battery sign sorry I'm filling off my phone but what these are meant to represent this is actually one of the calling cards of sly guy lures is that these are cast from real fish these are, these are made out of resin, these baits, these are resin baits, and these were actually cast out of a real bluegill. A real bluegill was made to this mold, so obviously the profiles will be right in line, but as you can see, I have a crappie color. So that's the crappie color right there, and looks just like a crappie too. Uh, crappie and bluegill, they're different shapes, but they have the similar kind of panfish, taller shaped, so obviously great, great crappie imitator too. Now, let's move on from the visuals. Little sum of that, it's a big lure, weighs a lot, and you need specialized gear. Amazing paint jobs, amazing quality. They're hand painted, and they represent a bluegill crappie and other panfish, sunfish, extremely well. Now, let's move on to what this bait is. As you can see by its one joint, this is a glide bait. Now, glide baits for, I'm assuming most of you know, but a glide bait, 
you, I know I talked about this in my last swim bait video. The glide bait, they swim, they go out, they come back in, and they have a lot of drawing power. So instead of just like swimming in a straight direction, they glide like this. But this bait, it has a killer, killer glide action. You can fish it super slow and it just... Nice glide, just like that. Looks great. You can speed it up, or you can just give it a nice steady retrieve. And even, I have, I had it on, I haven't tried this on an 8 to 1 reel, but I've tried it on reels where I just, I hit the water, I just burn, 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 burn. And it just, oh, that's not a good, but it does that glide action super, super fast through the water, and you can kill it, just pause it, and it, whoosh, turn off the side. It, it will not, it never, like a lot of cheaper glide baits, you'll, work on and then when you stop them well, they kind of roll over and go all over the place and if fish will get to eat that it's probably just gonna turn away and go off and try to find a different crappie or whatever trying to imitate but this bait it never washes out now some of my other favorite retrieves is with a reel just a boom 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 it's like a slide 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 and it will just go Or you can get more aggressive with it, like slide, 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 and it can just, and it never, it like sometimes when you're running super, super, or not, not with the straight retrieve, but when you're sliding it super hard, it may start to like go up a little bit, but not much. It still looks killer in the water. It never rolls over on its back or goes up or goes down. It's tracked perfectly in the water, as slow as you want to fish it, or I guess not as slow. You can't be crawling the handle, but slow speed and ultra as fast you can turn the handle. This thing does never not wash out, and it's killer. Now this um, sink rate, this sink rate that I got is the slow float. Now what a slow float means, you may have heard of that term from baits like the um, Jackal Ganserel, where it doesn't sink, but it doesn't just float right on the surface. It just like hovers like right under the surface, like the fan is out if you let it like just leave it, it will, the fan will just like all you'll see the top of the fins. When it like throws into the water it will go down and it will hover there and just slowly slowly float up and it will eventually get to the surface which is nice because if you were to cast this off it's gonna float it's, it will float right back up to the surface so you're not really you most likely can eventually get it back so that's nice but it doesn't just stay on the top when you reel it you, if you can, if you keep your rod up a little bit and give it a, like a slower retrieve or even a speedier retrieve, you can keep this like r kind of right under the surface. But if you just normally do your thing and keep your rod at a normal level, you can get this thing to go down uh, six inches a foot. Or if you just like put your rod down and, and give it like a little bit of a speedier retrieve, it doesn't have like those little angle down fins like the Jackal Ganserel, but it will just naturally, because of how much of a slow float it's not even like floating, it's so slow float, it's such a slow float, that it basically just goes down like a normal glide bait, and will track through the water, and then if you stop it, it like suspends for a few seconds, and then it starts to go up very slowly. So it's really nice, because I actually would recommend the slow float, if you want to fish it like a lot deeper, 
I guess not the best option, but if you just want to fish it uh, down in the water column or you can have the option to fish it up near the top, I think the slow float is definitely what you should go with and I'm very happy that I got this. I wasn't so sure about it at first because everyone talked about slow sinks, but slow float is an absolutely great option right there. Now, we'll talk about the gear. I kind of already um, said this and like the gear. Um, you're gonna need a swim bait rod. It is, this bait is what is four ounces, seven and a half inches. It's a big bait. You don't only really throw it on some little casting rod and if you're spinning, if you're, if you're gonna throw it on a spinning rod, like a bass spinning rod, I think you should maybe, um, maybe read a little bit more about fishing. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you're gonna need a swim bait rod for this. I would say at least a heavy power. At least like a, I would say a 710 heavy power rod at the minimum. I throw mine on an 8 foot heavy, rated 1 to 6 ounces. That's a great way. You can throw it on a heavy or an extra heavy. But, if you look at the bait, see those? Obviously, you know what those are. Those are treble hooks. Actually, these are the decoy quads. They have four prongs. But, eh, same thing. They're both, they both fall into the same category of these style of hooks. And if in normal bass fishing, when people talk about treble hooks, you always want, you never want a big pool cue to, to fish treble hooks because the fish can get leverage and shake those hooks out. So, like, I like to think of it as a kind of like crankbait. You like to have a little bit more of a parabolic action, so I don't want a stiff extra heavy like the rod you would throw a hut on. A rod you would throw a hut on, you want the thing to be like stiff with a little bit lighter tip just to like feel the bottom, but you want to crack those fish and just grind, 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 grind. And with a bait like this, you'll probably just rip the hooks right out in my opinion. And if fish come up and jump or if they try to shake their head, that rod comes like, it like will barely even, un it'll kind of unload. But if you get a rod that's heavy enough to cast the bait and, and, and drive the hooks in and get them in, but soft enough to have a nice parabolic action to get the fish in and not allow them to throw it. In my opinion, that's the best type of rod. Real, honestly, in my opinion, doesn't really matter. Uh, if you like slowing yourself down, you like having a fast reel that really impart action, like quicker and not have to like boom, 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 if you want to do quarter turns. Uh, seven to one probably is optimal. You can even go to an eight to one if you're really just kind of going like that. Or if you want to really slow down to go slow. Um, five, four to one, you can if you're mainly fishing it slower. But I would say a seven speed reel is probably what I would like best for this. But six is probably a close second. And eight, it works too, but it's probably not the optimal uh, reel for it. And line. Now, in swimming fishing, you know, there's vicious arguments about what line to use. Now, I personally use it on 20 pound mono. I like that little bit of cushion. That's what, that's just what I'm using right now. I've thrown speed on braid. Actually, I did have. I haven't talked about this, but I have I have not caught a fish in this bait. I got it fairly recently, but I've had an, I've had time to fish it, and like I haven't like committed myself to do it for super long. Um, I did have one fish, probably like a four pounder, come up, just miss it. A, blu a bluegill shaped bait. I a lot of people complain that it's a hard bass to eat, so why even throw them? I say I like the bluegill shaped baits because sorry, B. Um, I say I like bluegill. Sorry. <laughs> Get away. No. Okay. I say I like bluegill shape baits. I feel like they do uh, let me get more bites. Just because I think that's a more natural profile. And especially with a bait like this, it's so natural. I think that if it looks like a real thing and acts like the same thing. One second, brief intermission. Alright, so as I was saying before the bee interrupted me. I think when things something looks like the real thing and is shaped like the real thing, I have more confidence. And if I miss a, maybe a fish or two, uh, I, I still think if you have good chart hooks, you're not going to miss a ton. I think that the hookup ratio is just average for bluegill bait. It's a little bit. Okay, if that bee goes in. I, I want you to see. It's a bee on the camera right now. There we go. Okay. Oh, he, he's on my phone. He's on my phone. He's not even going over the camera, but he's probably just right about to... There we go. Really? Is that necessary? Okay. <sighs> okay. 
we're good now. It did not sting me, surprisingly. But, um, I say, all right, let's move on to that second, I think, a segment. I think we kind of done all that about the shape of the bait, hookup ratio. Just average for the bluegill bait, a little bit subpar, but I think you'd give it up for that absolute realism. Alright, so now let's move into our last segment talking about this bait. And this is extremely important for anyone looking at this bait. They're probably looking at it saying, wow, that looks great. Swimming action looks great. What's the deal? Where can I buy it? How much is it? And obviously, most of you probably already know how much this bait is. And this is a very important topic is the value. Um, this lure retails at $140. Are you able to own throw swim baits? or especially don't even fish, they're probably looking at that thing and saying, what, how can a fishing lure be that much? But people who throw more swim baits like this, they can understand the higher price tag. Now, first of all, I did not pay that. I would, if you think that you're gonna get a deal like I did, this I'm gonna pay mo so much attention to this topic right now because if you wanna get one of these, you're, you're probably gonna be playing close to retail. I got an extremely rare deal for, eight. I got this bait for $80, which is kind of unheard of, and I wouldn't recommend you expecting to get one for that cheap, but this bait retails, it retails for a lot, but hear me out, don't just click off this video right now and say, oh, come on, that's weird, but um, this bait, it is a handcrafted bait, like I said, it's a handcrafted bait, these are made one by one by one person, so much time and so much energy goes into making just one of these baits. The molding process, the carving process, everything, making all the molds, pouring them, not pouring them, not really like a soft plastic, but yeah, I guess kind of with the resin. But, and then the painting process, all those that is diligently painted. That's not a screen print, that's not anything. That's one man's hand making this bait one by one, and that's his job. And for that price, for that, um, kind of bait you pay for that you pay for that it's a handmade bait and everything about this bait so in my opinion if you're just getting into swim baits or you think oh that bait looks kind of cool um well it's kind of expensive but I guess I'll spend it on everything everything I have I wouldn't recommend it I say start your start um down low and build your way up to these um and, in my opinion, nicer and more expensive baits. But for people who, if you are used to spending that money, if you're someone who throws swim baits and knows how swim baits can get really expensive and are prepared to spend this much money, in my opinion, it's worth it. And I think you'll be very happy with the bait. It is just, it's the best bluegill, most natural, or one of the most natural, probably one of maybe two most natural bluegill or I keep on stressing it in this case crappie swim baits on the entire market and that is another reason why I do recommend the slow float because you know a lot of times throwing swim baits all that weight if you cast and you get a backlash ding that bait may pop off and go flying out into the abyss and sink to the bottom this bait can't really lose it or you absolutely can lose it but it's not going to sink to the bottom if you cast it off or it falls in the water so that is definitely, I feel like everything is getting messed up in this video. But if you were to cast this off, it's not gonna sink to the bottom. It, you will be able to get it if you can get on a boat or I don't wanna say it, but swim out there and grab it. I think it's worth it for the price of the spade it is. You can do that. So, I know this is a long video, but I think that is everything that I have to say about this bait right here. The Sly Guy seven and a half inch replica gill slash crappie. Let's go to the outro. All right, guys, so that's gonna do for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one.